This podcast is on the transport of sugar. Um, I'm not going to have you write down a heading for it yet, though, because I want to review a little bit of what we already talked about in the plant transport vodcast earlier. So in the earlier vodcast, we talked about two different types of tissue that can help move things around a plant or a tree. So there was xylem, which moved water, and then a short introduction to phloem, which moves dissolved sugar, a food for the plant. So just a quick review of how this works. You have this in your notes already. But phloem can move the sugar in all directions. Sugar is made in leaves of the plants through photosynthesis, and that sugar can be moved you know, through the branches, down the trunk, up the trunk, to the roots, out of the roots, whatever direction it needs to go to be used by the plant. Um, again, we've just got kind of like tubes or straws that are the cells that are involved here, so they're mostly just space for moving that sugar around. And there are two types of cells, the sieve tube members and the companion cells. So we discussed this already, um, but again, I just wanted to do a quick review so you remembered what we were talking about. So we're going to focus on that phloem a little bit more in this vodcast and see how it actually does move the sugar around in all directions. All right, so here's your heading for this particular vodcast. Uh, the heading should be sugar transport. And water moves really quickly through trees. We discussed that um, in the earlier vodcast. But sucrose or sugar can also move through the plant fairly quickly at about one meter per hour. So if you imagine sugar flowing at that pace, that's a pretty good clip. Um, there are a couple things that are involved in sugar transport. First, there's this idea of source to sink. And then the second idea is the pressure flow hypothesis. Right, so we're going to start with the source to sink idea, and then as far as the pressure flow hypothesis goes, we'll talk about that on the next slide. So what you need to know about source to sink is this, that the sugar will go from where it's made. That's too thick. Let's see if I can find a little bit thinner. There we go. So the sugar moves from where it's made to where it's needed. Okay, so what could this be? And let's just go down below here. This could be moving from the leaves to the roots, okay, where it's stored. It could also be moving from the roots to the leaves where it might be used. Okay, so what's happening in the um, fall, for example, is the roots are storing up a bunch of the sugar that have been made by the plant's leaves through the entire summer. And it gets moved down to the roots and stores it up for the winter. And then when it's time for those leaves to grow again in the spring, when our trees start budding out and forming leaves, the sugar will start moving back up from the roots to the leaves again. And one of the great benefits of this is in the springtime when the sugar starts moving from the um, roots of the tree up to the leaves, we can collect that sugar in the form of syrup. So this is when people harvest maple syrup, for example. It's usually in about March when it starts to warm up a little bit. And that sugar starts going from its source, so where it's been stored in the roots, up into the leaves again. And we can capture that by tapping the tree, by simply drilling a hole in the, in the trunk and getting the sugar that way, the sugar that's moving. So that's one of the main ideas, is it's going to be moving from where it's made, um, I guess we could also say where it's stored, so where the most sugar is. Okay, if it's being stored in the roots or it's being made in the leaves, it's going to move from that area to wherever it's needed. So that's the source to sink idea. Now we're going to look a little bit more at this pressure flow hypothesis. So um, you're going to want to eventually kind of sketch this out in your notebook, but it would probably benefit you to kind of listen to the procedure first and then pause your vodcast and sketch it out with maybe some notes to yourself as to what's happening. So you're not going to have to draw this all in this much detail, so that's why I think it's um, important to probably listen to the highlights first. 
All right, so what's going on in this particular diagram? Well, first of all, you can see over here we have our xylem. Let's see if we can get that to go away. Here's our xylem vessel, okay? And over here are the sieve tube members or the phloem. Okay, so the water is moving up from the roots, okay, in this direction, through the xylem, and the sugar, in this example, is moving down from the leaves to the roots to be stored, okay? So that, first of all, is important to understand this kind of two-directional thing going on here. Then, we're going to look at specifically how does the sugar move from the top of the phloem to the bottom? So there are these different steps. So you can see there's one, two, three, four steps to make this happen. I'm going to kind of go through each one to show you what's going on. So in step number one, we have the water that's in the xylem right here gets moved over to the phloem. Okay, so they're right next to each other, so nutrients and things can pass between them. In this case, the water can go through the cell walls and into the phloem. And as that happens, the pressure is going to increase. Just like you're filling up a water balloon, right? As you add more and more water to the water balloon, the pressure increases. All right, so there's lots of pressure in there. The other thing that has happening in this area for step number one is these leaf cells, which I'll highlight for you real quick right here. Let's move this out of the way. Okay, these leaf cells are making sugar, and that sugar is being moved into the flow. Okay, so this whole thing is a leaf cell. I'll highlight the whole thing. Oop. Right here. This whole thing is a leaf cell. Okay, so let me get rid of my drawings because they're starting to get fusing. There we go. All right, so the whole thing is a leaf cell right there. And it's making sugar through photosynthesis. And again, that sugar is moving into the phloem as well. Now, how does that sugar move into the phloem? You can see that there's less sugar here than there is here. Okay, so over here <clears throat> in the leaf cell, so the leaf excuse me, has low sugar, and the phloem has high sugar. Sorry about my bad handwriting. Okay, so that means that the sugar can move into the phloem through passive transport. This hopefully is coming back to you from biology. Passive transport doesn't take any energy to move things from high to low concentration. So we're moving a whole bunch of sugar in here. We're putting it under pressure because of the water that's coming in from the phloem. And that's going to start to squeeze here at number two, the water down through the phloem in the downward direction. All right, just like you could squeeze the water out of a water balloon. Okay, so it's the combination of water increasing the pressure from the xylem and then the sucrose or the sugar moving into the phloem that's causing it to move downward. All right, so then we're down at this bottom level, okay, where we're at a root cell. We want to store that sugar in the root cell, okay, but there's a problem because we've got lots of sugar in the phloem, so let's just record that like we did lots of last time. The phloem has high sugar, okay, and the root cells have lower sugar. All right, so we can't get the sugar into the root cells through passive transport this time. Instead, they have to use active transport. We have to pump the sugar in to these root cells through active transport. Another thing that helps that out is you can see over here, the water is moving out of the phloem at this point and back into the xylem. Okay, so that decreases the pressure down here at the bottom. Okay, so less pressure down here, which helps 
the water to flow because things always move from high pressure to low pressure. So that's going to help the water push the sugar down and then to get the sugar into the root cells we need some active transport, some energy to do that. Alright, so again that's the pressure flow hypothesis. If you need to go back and draw this now and um, possibly you know, watch it a second time to make sure you get all the notes that go with it, uh, that would be fine. Just rewind and replay.